Hi, Artie here from Bar Mills. This time we're going to take a quick look at the primary build of the REA Depot at Cranberry. Now this kit is going to come at this point because it has not been released yet as we shoot this in both HO and O scales. We're going to use the same video uh, as a reference. Uh, there are some differences as far as the approach to the building goes. Uh, we will, um, I'll get to those when we get to those, okay? But for those of you who are new to the hobby or just want to revisit and see how we do things, this is basically how we approach it. Number one is I have some laser cut parts here. Now you understand, I don't have instructions when I do this because I write the instructions and those will happen later on. You'll see anything from the sheets that we'll use for the roof here, which is kind of a complex roof, to clapboard. We have our own special clapboard made up. It's kind of unique to anyone else's. And within the clapboard, uh, sheets are in this case there are seven walls to this kit and the first thing we want to do is use a, uh, a hobby knife or any or a uh, or a straight edge blade which I like and trim around not these walls that are squarish but the ones one two there are three peak walls in this case trim around them with the knife and I have just done this one uh, prior to this shoot and the first thing we want to do is, you'll notice if you run your fingers across the top, there are little nubbles kind of uh, up there, kind of nipples. And you'll generally find them in our kits in the, what they call the long grain of the, uh, of the wood. If, you put, if we put connecting spots here, they're very difficult to remove. So the first thing you do is grab a sanding stick. Now, this is the bar mill sanding stick that we've been uh, distributing for a while now. Uh, this is a great tool. You may have one built up like the one I used uh, on a previous kit. Uh, it's just bigger, uh, but this is really cool. So the first thing to do is sand off all of this before you do anything on these things. Because all of a sudden it went from having this nipple here to not having a nipple here. And this is very, very important. Now, the first step actually here in doing a kit like this is to add corner posts. Now. The question is, do you want the corner post the same color or a different color? But before we discuss that, let me just say this. Our corner posts are 5 64ths of an inch thick. The wood is 1 16th. Almost any Craftsman kit you get will have a 1 16th inch square corner post. But we like to, once attached, have the corner posts give a little profile to the building. I happen to live in a clapboard house and I can tell you that the corners do stick out just a little bit from the clapboard. So by putting these against here, you get a nice profile. Now, there are a couple things involved with, with the installation of these, but one of the early things that you have to figure out early on is if you want this uh, contrasting color between the corners and the, uh, the face of the building itself. If you look up here on the screen, you can see a very large picture of our prototype. I put it up there so it's easier to see. And you see, obviously, we use a different color between the uh, face of the building and the corners. So uh, the thing of it is, do you want to finish and paint these before you assemble them? Or do you want to finish and weather this first, finish and weather this first, and then assemble it together? Because that's how it, we achieved this effect. So. Try to set that up in your mind early on. And in a few minutes, uh, once I have this cut to size and ready to go, we, uh, we will start uh, uh, following along with the assembly process on this uh, REA Depot at Cranberry. One of the things we have to speak about in this kit, we referenced it a little bit earlier on, is interior bracing. Not all manufacturers include interior bracing. Personally, the first Craftsman kit, quote unquote, that I have purchased did not come with interior bracing. I painted the thing, I put it together, and it warped up and it was terrible, and I swore off of Craftsman kits. I just figured it must be me. Uh, it can't be the kit because it's a manufacturer, but there are uh, certain companies that, uh, to save a dollar, will cut short on some basic things like interior bracing. Now, with this is especially important in a large kit o scale kit is uh, an o scale offering is far more demanding of interior bracing than say an n scale kit and basically here's two wall sections that i've been working on and if you notice the uh the taller peak proof section here has had installed if you can see that a very long piece of vertical bracing on the inside it doesn't interfere with uh windows doors or roofing to come that's an important thing 
And then when I have a, a panel like this, I actually put two pieces, if you can see them there, and they, fo they fall between the, with the window panels. So that's a very important thing. Do not forget interior bracing. A very unique thing about this kit though, is if you're an HO scale, you'll be dealing with plastic doors and windows. If you're an O scale, you will have laser cut ones and, and the technique is different. The, uh, the plastic door installation, and there are three doors of what we call people doors on this kit. And normally you would take a plastic door and insert it into an opening. This is the same size opening here as we're using in this section here. What we've done here to give the kit somewhat of a unique look is we've actually taken the plastic door, taken the wall, placed it face down, and glued the door in from the back. Normally, there is a very thin lip that goes around the door uh, casting. We are actually including the lip uh, in the opening. So once this door is installed, it, including the lip, will lay flush with the face of the building. Then what we are doing is grabbing a piece of laser board, which is pre-cut, and taking off the adhesive backing and dressing out the outside of the door to give it a different look. It's a very unique situation where we are not using the door um, trim lip, you might say, to, uh, to affix the door in a position. Indeed, we are gluing that into the opening and then surrounding it with a laser cut piece to enhance this uh, visual size of the door. Now, if you're doing this in OSCO, you don't have this because it's already taken care of. You're not using plastic. Uh, you are using several components. There's three or four components to put this together. But this is a little unique on this particular kit. So if you're building this one, don't think you've taken a wrong turn someplace. It's just a different approach to, uh, to making this building a little more unique, which is something we like to do here at Barn Mills. Okay, here we go with a handheld video. You'll know it's me holding it when you see it shaking around a lot. I tend to do that. Basically, there are seven walls to this kit. Uh, this wall on this side is for the extension uh, that goes off to one side. This is the back wall and there's another side wall that goes this way. If you have noticed at this point, and understand this should be finished, it should be done before you get to the point of gluing these things together. But the thing of it is, if you'll notice the end pieces, the pieces with pitch screws, all have the corner posts in place. And all you do is you take some glue, and I'm using here again the Eileen's Turbo Tacky Glue right there. You use that glue and you take some and you put a strip right along this edge right here and then you press it so it meets this edge here. That's all we're doing here. Now, before this happens, interior bracing, obviously the corner posts, primer, paint, paint the windows, install them. If you want to do some graphics, you can do that too. Uh, so this is a very rudimentary view of exactly how I do this. Try to keep things as square as you can, as you can see from the top. I do it by eye, but you can use the corner of a CD case or an old record album or what have you. So this is very just a, just a quick going over on the status of the kit. Now, the difference between the HO and O is that these plastic windows here would not be plastic in O scale. They would also be positionable, with a little bit of work in O scale. But, uh, and the same goes for the doors, which are laser cut in O scale. Um, so that would be the only difference. If you're building O scale, you do have those extra steps to, uh, to uh, go through before you get to this point. The roof on this uh, building, uh, we're going to continue this part of the discussion because the roof on this building is car stock. It looks like this. Now, we've cut this one out. There's some things you have to know. You need a sharp, blade such as on this exact one. This is a number 11 blade because the, the roof when you get it is cut like this, but what you have to do is score along the points that connect one corner to another on this side as well as on this side, and then find a little, there's a little notch right in the center of the roofing panel that if you lay a straight edge across it or just follow the uh, line that's already described will enable you to actually get this. So you have your peaked uh, look. Now the idea is this odd shaped thing has to also be scribed from the back. In this case, this prototype was not scribed properly, so I used a piece of tape to attach one piece to another to make sure that they stay together. Uh, if you overscribe and cut your uh, roof by mistake, 
this is just masking tape. This works fine, and you can, you can get away with this. So the idea is this part of the roof has to be able to function to go in this direction, but also this direction. You want it on a hinge, so make sure the scribes are very light. What we're going to do is basically take this roof, bend it into a situation, kind of contort it, where it doesn't sit on your desk at a right angle like this. It sits kind of as, there's a pitch to both the top of the roof and the side uh, runoffs of the roof. And as you can see in this photo here, the pitch comes down more severely here, then gently glides off and surrounds the building. And this is where uh, we have to connect the, uh, the four extended parts of the building. Now these are already connected. Another thing, there are scribe marks diagonally here. That also has to be lightly scribed because you want to be able to do this. As, as the kit comes out of the box, it will not flex like that, uh, but it does have the scribe marks there, so you can do that. When we laid the roof down on my workbench here, you can see how it kind of springs open like this. The idea is as we reach for the building, that this roof will sit here like this, and this is where you'll get your true perspective of where you're going. And when it bends over by adjusting not not only this what would be my left side of the building to this but you can see how with by favoring these angles just a little bit you can actually meet them up perfectly in the corners so the idea here is to reach for a piece of masking tape which uh, i do have here give me one second and take a very small piece just like this now this is ho scale or, or o scale Try to basically form the angle of the roof so everything mashes together. And then, this is a little awkward doing it with one hand for this demonstration, but sealing it up like this, creating a seam right there. And you can see how that works. You can turn around the building, have another piece of masking tape ready. Here you go, just a little one. Bend it over and by just favoring it and keeping the adhesive side up, obviously, I'm doing this from underneath. But just by favoring it, putting it on one side, then favoring it, favoring it up against the other side, and trying to achieve that perfect, that perfect seam. Uh, here it's escaping me just a little bit, uh, simply because I think the masking has been handled too much. But I think you'll get the idea as you do this, uh, on, and you'll be able to see the masking is letting go here. You'll be able to see basically how you achieve these corners. Now, the next step is once you have the corners on, you'll be able to lift the roof off. It will stay in shape. You can favor the corners a little bit more closely. But the thing here is to take your glue, put a strip of glue here, and then push them together by hand, letting the tape hold them together while the glue dries. Once the glue has dried on the upper surface, you simply flip the roof upside down and put another fillet on the lower surface to form a more permanent bond. And I'll show you this in just a second. Okay, this is just a very quick shot of uh, the bottle of glue we use, which is Turbo Tacky Glue by Eileen's. Uh, we've added a fillet or fillet, as they say, on the two diagonal uh, angled uh, sections of the roof. Let me get this right, right along here. And then it's sister section along the back. This stuff will dry quite thin. And once it's set into place, I'm going to remove the tape from underneath and do it yet again. Uh, don't worry about this being too bubbly. You can sand it lightly if you have to, but you probably won't have to. And these areas will be covered. As you can see, let me bring it up to the photo. These areas will be covered with capping anyhow right there. So the idea is to, this. these are basically, uh, this taper is, uh, is assisting in forming essentially a hat or a cap that will sit on top of this part of the building. So that's how you get to this point. Worry about the shingles later on. Once assembled, this is what the roof will look like. Let me just give you a quick going over. The first part of the roof to add is this one and then followed by this one, because as you can see, they lock in to each other just like that. And you can see very vaguely, you can see a little bit right there of the glue that we added. And we added it to both sides of the, uh, of the assembly. And all, all it took is this to put this on. Now the O scale, I have to tell you, is a little bit more difficult. The sizing's a little bit more uh, 
specialize, you might say, than this. It's supposed to be the same, but some things change from scale to scale. So basically, once you have that on, you'll have an idea if it fits. The next step is to go ahead and install your roof uh, rafter combs, uh, primarily, uh, well, actually under both sides of the building. Uh, but on this side of the building, the rafter combs have to align with the slots that are cutting to the wall. And on this side of the wall, excuse me, on this side of the building, the, the rafter tails are really more for show. And uh, we'll show you how to do that coming up. At this point, we're looking at the rafter tail sheets. Now, the rafter tail sheet is actually just not just rafter tails. It's a few different components here. This is the platform decking. This is the sub base. Uh, this obviously is a stair space or accessor right there. And there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rafter tail combs. Now, keep in mind that these two here are for the left side of the building. They're straight ahead and you notice they have a recess in them. Right now, we're going to deal firstly with the one, two, three, four, five pieces here. Now, logic would dictate that the longest piece, this one here, would be for the longest side of the building, which would be the uh, edge of the roof facing to the extreme right. The front and back of the, uh, of the right side of the building, the peaked walls would have these rafter tails. You notice they match. And then the shorter side that straddles the, uh, the left side of the building is actually broken into two pieces. Uh, note that these are kind of oddly shaped because they accommodate for the crease in the wall coming down. Uh, we add glue to these and glue them directly under the uh, cardstock roofing uh, before it's placed into position. It'll do two things. Uh, number one, it will add a lot of detail, and you can leave these laying out a little proud if you want to and trim them back later as far as length goes. And number two, especially in the O scale where the roofing is larger, uh, the roofing you'll see in O scale tends to be a little wavy when you put it on because it's only cardstock, and this will help make that far more rigid. Make sure you clamp these into position. Uh, they look good, and they will act in a way as uh, interior bracing, even though they are actually indeed... Uh, uh, combs, uh, rafter combs, let me get that right. So we'll continue with that and get back to it in a minute. The installation of the uh, rafter combs is, is extremely simple on this kit. Uh, we just use our glue, put the glue on the bottom part of the roof and slid our uh, corresponding combs into position leaving a little bit of a reveal to emphasize the fact that they're there in the first place. Uh, there's one long one. Uh, there are two that are identical in size for the front and back of the building. And then there's a segmented one. And this you have to be careful about where you put it, but this goes on the building as well. Now, before we put this assembly onto the building and consider shingling the assembly, it's important to know that you have to have your secondary roof uh, panel uh, scribed, you must scribe that yourself, and fold it with a crisp fold. The uh, rafter combs on this part of the building are actually installed in the slots first. All we do is run a very thin bead of glue uh, along the top of both front and rear wall panels, and then carefully align and position into place the rafter combs. I expose as much as I could coming down, and be careful that when you install these, you try to match the pitch that is uh, dictated at the end of the uh, roof panel right there. So at this point, what you'll have is this. And remember, you do add the shingles later on. So you would take this, the first panel, make sure that you have the opening facing in the uh, direction of the uh, extension on the building. And simply, of course, you're gonna wanna glue this, drop this into place. Secondly, because these are already installed, you have to carefully, and you can hold this down while you do this because you will have glue there, put this right here, open it up, slide it, and ma make sure there's glue on this thing. You might want to give it a little bit of space and slide it into position just like that. And then you have a very compound roof angle locked into another co uh, compound uh, kind of roof angle with, with all the cutting, and you'll end up with a really flawless roof. Now. Any gaps that you see there, and they are very minimal, will be hidden by shingles anyhow. But look how quickly that went together right there. And this is uh, 
amazing engineering by Jim Mooney, our engineer. Uh, at this point, you want to go and study your, your instructions and prepare your actual roofing shingles on this model. Remember, uh, everything else has been painted and weathered before you go through these steps as far as adding the roof goes. We're going to be talking about building the loading dock outside of this building at this point. Now, it could be a very complicated procedure, but the way we've engineered this, and Jim Mooney has engineered this specifically, it's kind of simple. There are really only six components involved with this. Uh, the first component are uh, the support uh, beams that go under it, the, the uh, supports, and there are actually one, two, three, four of these. You can see how they're cut out of a sheet of 16th inch thick plywood and you can see their profiles they are affixed and aligned to the bottom of the basswood sheet that already has rafter tails already i'll call them rafter tails but the support beams already cut in place so when you look at the end of this you'll be able to see the end of the beams that hold up the uh the uh, the platform itself so you have four parts five parts here and then prescribed and ready to go with a very thin sheet of plywood that simply sits on top of this assembly, just like that. And then of course, when you have the building, they sit just like that. Now this could be made much more difficult to build uh, by doing a lot of templates and edge gluing. And that is fine for many modelers, but for us, uh, at least for me, I'm more interested in doing fine detail work than in gluing one piece of wood to another, especially when especially when something like this that cannot really be seen very well is involved because what's the point of busting my horns on something that nobody's going to be able to actually ooh and ah about. Now, this is the approach to the HO scale version. If you were to look at this and realize that all of these pieces were cut out, what you would do is, if we look up at the screen here, this goes over the assembly I just showed you. It's the four components, one, two, three, four, glued onto the bottom with the uh, top face, uh, which is prescribed, glued onto it. This is not done exactly the same way if you are modeling O scale. In O scale, we've turned the cut components into a much larger sheet of plywood that has all these components actually removed because in O scale, these get much, much thicker and they don't look good if we cut them out of plywood, too many burnt edges, it just doesn't work for uh, a bar mills kit. So what we supply you with an O scale is a sheet like this and some strip wood so you can cut to size and lay in place into, into this template all the pieces they should align perfectly. The only issue being that you don't wanna to put too much glue be between each of these pieces because otherwise your components will be difficult to remove from the sheet. And you're going to have to use an exacto anyhow to make sure you trim around your components because there undoubtedly will be some sticking going on. So this is a substitute for the HO scale version where everything is already cut out, but the assembly itself remains identical. So that's a quick look at uh, one of the aspects of building this new REA uh, depot at Cranberry.